We're taking you live now to Queensland's Western Downs region where the state's Fire and Emergency Services is providing an update as crews have been battling more than 60 blazes. We've done up in the northwestern corner of this fire. Um, that work will continue into the evening and into tomorrow um, just to strengthen those containment lines. Uh, if we move to the Hannaford fire, um, again, that fire burnt relatively within containment lines today with a couple of small outbreaks that were quickly round up. Excellent work by crews there as well. Um, and then we moved down to the Mooney fire. Uh, same story again, burnt within containment lines. Some excellent work done there, uh, including some work done with the local landholders uh, in doing some small backburns to strengthen containment lines. Uh, all in all, um, a, a really excellent day by the crews out on the fire ground, um, working towards uh, really getting these fires under control. Uh, obviously, looking forward, you know, we've got the, uh, the weather coming through on Tuesday, which we're well aware of. Um, there is some increased fire weather on Tuesday, which we're preparing for um, and taking um, precautions to ensure that all these fire lines are strengthened up um, before Tuesday comes around. When you talk about bringing in extra reinforcements for Tuesday, does that mean you're bringing in new crews, refreshing the personnel teams, or what does that mean? Yeah, absolutely. So we're constantly refreshing crews at the moment. Fatigue management is of our highest priority. That includes the local crews. Um, we've had a, um, a long fire season already for some of these crews. So we have crews who have put up their hand, our volunteers from across the state, to come and give the local crews a hand. And we're continually refreshing those crews. How many structures so far have been lost? Yeah, so when it comes to structures loss, our rapid damage assessment teams are still continuing um, to work through um, when it's safe to do so, the areas around Tara um, for, for structure loss. But I'll refer to Jeremy from QPS uh, who will speak to the numbers. Ken, you spoke about today being a better day. Obviously, things changed pretty quickly yesterday and we saw some unpredictable sort of behaviour with these fire, fires. How, um, I guess, happy are you to hear that we, you know, we got through today and we got to get that preventative work done? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a little little bit of a break, uh, you know, a little bit of um, time for us to do some of the work to get on the front foot. Um, through no fault of the crews out on the fire ground, we've been incredibly reactive to these fires. Um, they're moving so fast. The fire behaviour is extreme. Um, so today was just an opportunity with some lighter winds to get on the front foot. It wasn't great. You know, the, the weather wasn't um, exactly how we love it. Uh, but it was better and so we could get on the front foot. Um, some really good planning is starting to take place now into the coming days to do uh, the utmost to strengthen these containment lines. What's tomorrow and Monday look like? Yeah, so tomorrow and Monday are, are also looking like days where we can get on this, this front foot. Again, it's a dynamic situation, um, but we'll be doing um, everything possible to strengthen these containment lines. I'll hand over to Jeremy. Thanks, Kent. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're continuing to uh, assist our colleagues. How's that? All good? Good afternoon, everyone. All good? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We're continuing to assist our QFS colleagues at um, in, in battling these multiple bushfires across the state um, as they threaten the state. Uh, there are currently 84 active bushfires um, burning across Queensland at this point in time. The major areas of concern are Jurong, Halliford, Gainda and Tara. Fires in uh, Mount Isa, Mareeba, Mooney, uh, Low Mead and Whitsunday are also being monitored. Uh, at this point, 73 structures uh, have been destroyed and that includes homes and sheds. Sadly, that number could rise as damage assessments continue. There have been no reports, thankfully, at this point of missing people, um, and there have been no arson-related incidents linked to any of, these any of these vegetation fires. As far as our evacuation centres are, are concerned, we've currently got uh, 266 people uh, at the Dolby Evacuation Centre, uh, with a further 42 people at Chinchilla. Uh, power and communications have also been restored in Texas uh, and work is commencing to develop temporary housing for those in need across the Western Downs. You guys have done an amazing job, haven't they? The people that are working in your police and fireys and SES and rural fire fighters. 
It's been a great team effort all round, and that's going to continue for some time, unfortunately, I believe. Jeremy, are there police patrols ongoing as well, I guess, to take care of the properties and deter looters, if that's something that's happening? Of course, of course. Some, some of these areas are under evacuation. We do have police deployed in those areas to continue patrols to make sure the property is kept safe and to give some reassurance to those people in those evacuation centres. Not at this point in time, no. Uh, Jeremy, if, if you can answer this, well, we've had a few reports, I guess, over the course of the Tara fire, I guess um, emergency messages not going out to people, whether that's because of cell towers being damaged and everything like that. Do you believe people are getting the messages, I, I guess, properly? And, and what should people be doing to, I guess, stay in the front for uh, I can't talk to, to whether or not those messages are, are uh, actually being received at those points, but um, I just encourage everyone to heed uh, those messages that are going out in the media and uh, be prepared. Everyone should have a bush, bushfire plan uh, as we speak, so we need to get on the front foot with that. When you say 73 structures destroyed, are they pretty much all tar up in the indoor area? Uh, I don't have that information on addresses or, or actual areas. That's a, a general number that's been provided to us. Police have gone to a lot of places, haven't they, to, to let people know and check? And we have, and that, that's ongoing. We're, we're planning further into the next week for, for that to continue, so. And um, what's the, I guess, the process look like when we can let people start to go back home? Do, do police and firefighters hang around to, to escort them back and uh, there for them yeah. when they return? So planning is underway at, at this point in time for that to occur, and that's uh, a joint arrangement that is continuing through, through our local uh, disaster management groups uh, to ensure that the public safety is number one and uh, no one's going to get hurt when they go back. We want to make sure that they're going back into a safe environment in a, in a, in a proper manner. Thank you. Great, thank you. So I might just do a quick spin on the warnings if everyone's happy. Queensland Fire and Emergency Services, they're providing an update on the bushfires that are currently burning throughout Queensland.